What is going on guys, Bitwise Guy here, coming to you with the 16th Rust tutorial series. Today is Sunday, 5th of June, 2016, and let's jump straight into it. Today's tutorial is on strings, that's right, S-T-R-I-N-G-S, -S, and that is relevant, and if you don't know why, follow along and you'll find out why. I'm sorry, I'll never do that again, but um, let's read straight from the book, because that's a good place to get started. Okay, strings are an important concept for any programmer to master. Rust strings handling system is a bit different uh, from other languages due to its systems focus. So for those of you who don't know, Rust is a systems programming language Mitch, which basically boils down to meaning it is fast. It is really, 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 really fast. Anytime you have a data structure of variable size, things can get a bit tricky. And strings are a resizable data structure. That being said, Rust strings also work differently than in some other systems languages, such as C. Let's dig into the details. A string is a sequence of Unicode scalar values encoded as a stream of UTF-8 bytes. All strings are guaranteed to be valid encoding uh, of UTF-8 sequences. Additionally, unlike some systems languages, strings are not null terminated and can contain null bytes. So before we read on, let us break down the little paragraph which starts with let's dig into the details, because I think the details are quite important. Now I've just been discussing with some guys on the, um, on the expert channel of Rust on Mozilla DevNet, um, irc.mozilla.org. I've just been discussing what is relevant to kind of beginners and as far as strings and, and what isn't relevant, and I've been trying to kind of make up my own mind. So firstly, I would just like to give a little shout out to Mutaba and to US Ban. Um, those guys have been really helping me kind of decipher what's going on there and help me further my understanding on, uh, on the strings in, on strings in Rust. So, let me try and tell you what they've told you, and also kind of put my own spin on it, because I think, I think we can get through this. I think we can really kind of break down what is important here and what is not important. So, basically, um, a string is a sequence of Unicode scalar values encoded as a stream of UTF-8 bytes. So, let's just firstly understand something important, and I want to understand, like, the basic concept here. What is a sequence? Well... A sequence is simply this, I put a single character down, that's one. I put another character down, that's a sequence. I put another character down, that's a sequence, a sequence. Well, this is just a big sequence of characters. Right here, just a big sequence of characters. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what it says, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so, the next part of that is that it is a, it is basically a bunch of scalar values. What a scalar value is, it's a single value, so... Um, a, sing a single value is basically this. Now, um, without getting the actual technical details wrong here, what they're basically trying to say is, um, it, is a, uh, it is a sequence of chars. It is a sequence of characters. So a string is simply a compilation of these three characters. This is a string. This is a single character. This is a single scalar, val uh, single scalar value of a character. And this is a sequence of, uh, of them, which makes up a string. Okay, so, additionally, um, Rust basically guarantees to you that the encoding which the string is in will be of a UTF-8 type. Now, I won't explain what UTF-8 is beyond the fact that UTF-8 is kind of like, um, it's kind of a character set and it guarantees you that certain characters will display uh, in a certain way. That's not exactly what it is on a technical level, but that's the only real way I know how to explain it. If you are interested in what UTF-8 is, and you really, I think you should be, um, you should go look up UTF-8. It's used everywhere. It's used on the web. It's used um, on, your, on your computer. It's used on probably your PlayStation, all sorts of places. Additionally, like um, unlike uh, some other systems languages, strings in Rust are not null terminated and uh, and can contain null bytes. So um, this is like this is a little bit of a weird one. If you've never done any other systems programming languages before, um, let's just call it, let's just make up a random systems programming language. Let's call it um, let's call it Fubar. This is our systems programming language here. And in Fubar, um, strings. So we'll say string, uh, string, and 
to to basically say the end of the string um, finishes here because in a in a computer you need to know when the string starts and when it finishes. Well, we know that this is the start of the string, but realistically, how do we know what the end of the string is? Well, some some programming languages say, well, if I find a, if I find a um, a null termination, which is backslash zero, which basically says, hey, th I am terminating this as null. That is the end of the string. But in Rust, that's not the case. In fact, in, in Rust, uh, strings can contain a backslash zero, which is a null termination, uh, and the string is not necessarily terminated. Other, in, other, in other simpler words, it basically means that that's not the end of the string necessarily. Okay, let's move on. So Rust has two uh, main types of strings. It has a reference string and it has the, uh, it has the string type. So I just want to add something here. The the string type, which is the str, is the most primitive string type in Rust. Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the reference string first. I'm just going to call it the reference string um, because that's basically the only way I know how to pronounce it. Um, these are called string slices. So um, the official name in Rust is a string slice. Uh, a string slice it has a fixed size and cannot be mutated. So if you remember the video on uh, mutability versus immutability, um, we talked about things that can be changed and things that cannot be changed. Um, well, a string slice that has a fixed size cannot be mutated, cannot be changed. Um, is a reference to a sequence of UTF-8 bytes. So let's jump into some syntax here so that we can continue on explaining, explaining however you want to, you know, say it. Um, so we'll say let, uh, I don't know, we'll say let hello underscore um, world and we'll say let that equal to um, hello from the other side. I saw that written on a wall once, so I thought, hey, you know, let's put that in a tutorial. And we'll save this. And um, my Rust format is so totally broken because I had to format my computer, so that's what that error is. So we're going to go and pull up our terminal here. And um, what we'll do is we will cd into the directory. So we'll say string lesson for me, and I'll just clear the console for you guys. And we will say uh, cargo run. There you go. And we get a warning that says, hey, you didn't use that, but that's true because we didn't use it. But uh, we get a valid compilation, so that's all good. All right, let's continue on here for a little bit. So it says, hello there is a string literal type. If you're reading from the book, um, they've used the string hello there, it doesn't matter. Um, is a string literal type, and its type is um, a ampersand, so it's basically a static string. A string literal is a string slice uh, that is statically allocated, meaning that it is saved inside our compiled program. So what does that exactly mean? Well, that's really important, and I've been talking about uh, this with the guys in, um, the, in the IRC channel about this, and the way that it's been explained to me, and the way that I understand uh, the way that this works in Rust, is as follows. So we allocate this string up here, so we, sorry, so we write this string in here, so we say let hello underscore world equals hello from the other side, and what the compiler does is it basically compiles this string right here into the binary executable of our file. In other words, the file that is output from the compiler, that string is basically shoved inside there uh, in, in some place which uh, the compiler feels like putting it. I'm sure that there is a technical implementation for that. I don't know it, but, um, but nonetheless the compiler puts that in there. Now, this kind of goes into a little area that I don't want to cover too much in this video because it's a whole different ball game in and of itself. It's a whole different set of videos, I reckon. Um, but that is lifetimes, and I just want to explain. Basically, what happens here is that um, this this creates a, a lifetime for the entire runtime of the program. Basically, when this is created, um, this this exists um, from the from the start of the program to the end of the program. So let's let's just get this right here. Um, this part right here is um, is available from the start of the program to the end of the program's start to finish, right? Um, and that's called a lifetime, and that is the that is a lifetime of the entire program. Um, and the Rust book explains that by saying uh, and exists for the entire duration that the program runs. The greeting binding is a reference to this statically allocated string. Any function expecting a string slice will also expect a string literal. String literals can uh, span multiple lines and there are two forms. The first will include the new line uh, and leading spaces. So what we're going to do here is 
Um, I'm just going to finish up this specific video on strings, and the next video we're going to continue on with this book, which um, will be part two of this. I don't want to make these videos too long for you guys, um, but just to finish off this book, sorry, just to finish this little part of the book, uh, we're just going to print out the string here just to show um, that it works. So we say print line macro, and we will say um, uh, like that, and we will just do a little replace. We'll say hello underscore world. And we will save this and we'll get a fantastic little error and we'll say cargo run. And what did it do wrong? Oh, I've got these run the wrong way. And there you go. As you can see, we get hello from the other side. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, stay tuned for the next video, which will be on string literals that can span multiple lines. Um, it's not too important of a video. The more important videos that are coming up on strings will be directly after that. But um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I love you all. Peace.